What's going on with you and Jesus? I don't fuck with a nigga, he'll pussy. Mm. Right. So, so what's got you feeling that way, man? Niggas just be doing a little bitch ass shit. You know what I'm mm. saying? Shit a bitch do, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a little bitch. Alright. It's like actually like you know some legal charges against you right now. Yeah. Are they murder charges or attempted murder charges? Murder charges. Murder charges, straight up. I ain't too many people got the motive to do some shit like that. Mm. I just like a detective, learn, you know what I'm Look at the motive. Who has motive to do it? Mm. And this fuck nigga, the only nigga has motive. Mm. Jesus. We're in Quality Sound Studio. It's the home of a QC label. This is Migos' label, and it's run by Coach K, who's there dancing in front of the console. He is the Migos manager. He kind of discovered them. He's also Gucci Mane's manager, and before that, he was Young Jeezy's manager. He is sort of like the the trap house impresario, like the uh, the Tony Wilson of trap. I don't think trap music was really born until we put out Jeezy's first mixtape which was The Streets Is Watching, and then we put out Trap or Die. And I think after that, people got it. Jeezy wasn't even rapping, man. He was like on some CEO shit. He wanted to be Master P. He was a street nigga. It's like he was respected in the streets. You gotta think about this. If he put out some whack music, then the street cats ain't gonna respect him. They're gonna be like, oh, you want no rapping nigga? You know, he was a real, like, he, you know, he came in the game a millionaire, and I can attest to that, you know what I'm saying? Well, Jeezy never officially signed with BMF, he ran with Big Meech and his crew during their heyday in the early 2000s. BMF, man, Black Mafia family. They spent a lot of money. And I should tell Jesus, you gotta start talking about this shit in your music. And once he understood how to do that shit, it was over with. It, it was the soundtrack to the streets. For real. When did Gucci Man start coming around too? Is he at the same time? He's at the same time. I, mean, I want him and Jesus to do some records together. He walks up on me. He said, you Coach K? I'm like, yeah, he said, man, I'm Gucci man. You know what I'm saying? You, I'm the guy you've been looking for. With Jeezy at the top of his game and Gucci Man, the up and coming heir apparent, Coach K decided to put the two together in the studio to work on a song. A song we all know as So Icy. Gucci came to the studio that man, I swear to God, he sung that hook so icy. Yo, he sung that hook all day. So I told Jeezy Man, like, just try this shit. You know what I'm saying? This shit might be crazy. This hook is melodic, you know? So then Zaytoven comes in. Zaytoven is one of the first of Atlanta's super producers and the principal architect of the trap music sound. When I first came here, when I got my first hit, the So Icy with Gucci Man and Young Jeezy, yeah. it was very Bay influenced because I was just moving from, you know, the Bay Area. So if you listen to the music, you'd be like, that doesn't sound like no producer that came out of Atlanta. You know what I mean? It's because I was fresh from out of the Bay Area. I was cutting hair at the barbershop. Gucci Man called me like, hey man, Zay, Young Jeezy want to do a song with us. I haven't made the beat or nothing. So I ran home, met him at my mama house, made the beat in like five minutes. And then we went down to the studio to meet Young Jeezy. You know, I'm from the Bay still, so I don't even know if they would even like my beat. So when we played the beat, they didn't even, weren't even feeling it for real. Until after the dude Lil Will sung the hook, you know, the, the all these girls decided. Once you heard that and the beat going together, then you start looking around the studio, everybody in the studio got a pen and paper trying to write to get on the song. It was special, that was one of the moments. I'm with the Gucci man and I'm so After we had it done, it was like, oh, we, got us a, we got a song. Jeezy was popping, he was a new guy, and then Gucci Man was an even newer guy. I couldn't even enjoy So Icy at that time because I had Gucci Man on me like, hey man, Zay, don't make sure you don't sell my song. Then I got Jeezy and them, and from Def Jam, like, hey man, what is it gonna take? We know we gotta get the song, we trying to do this and that. So I'm, I'm you know, this is my first time having a, a hit record, so I, don't, I almost don't know what to do. I know the one thing I really knew was me and Gucci was like brothers. He come to my house every day. We've been working every day. So I know for a fact that I'm rocking with Gucci, man, because this is our song. This is what we created together, and it's somebody I work with all the time. So 
that's how that's why it went the way it went. What's going on with you and Jesus? I don't fuck with a nigga, he a pussy. Mm. Right. So, up. what's got you feeling that way, man? Niggas just be doing a little bitch ass shit. You know what mm. I'm saying? Shit a bitch would do, you know what I mean? Mm. Like a little bitch. All right. So Icy was both the high water mark of Gucci's collaboration with Jeezy and the last time they ever worked together. The song begat a beef which quickly escalated way out of control, with Jeezy releasing a diss track, Stay Strapped, effectively offering a $10,000 bounty to the man who would bring him Gucci Man's prized Icy chain. One night shortly thereafter, the shit went down. Accounts vary widely about what exactly happened, but the version we heard from one source is that Gucci took home a girl from a club and was in the process of betting her when four armed men broke into the house and began pistol whipping him. It was a setup. Before they could take his chain, however, Gucci got his hands on one of the guns and fired nude at his assailants, killing one of them and sending the rest fleeing in terror. Legend has it Guwa buried the dead man in the woods behind a middle school and found a new girl to finish the night with. Um, there's like actually like you know, some legal charges against you right now. Yeah. Are they murder charges or attempted murder charges? Murder charges. Murder charges, straight up. I ain't too many people got the motive to do some shit like that. Mm -hmm. I just like a detective, learn, you know, some look at the motive, mm -hmm. who has motive to do it. Mm -hmm. And this fuck nigga, the only nigga has motive. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Yeah. The murder charge was quickly dropped on account of self-defense, and Gucci immediately released a retaliatory track, 745, crowing about his escape from death, jail, and chainless ignominy. When me and Gigi split, it was like 2007, like in the 2007 or 2008, we split. It wasn't good, you know what I mean? Why well, wasn't it good? I don't want to talk about that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, like, how did you end up with Gucci, though? I ran into Gucci in a um, patchwork studio. And he was like, uh, shit, I need some help. And I was like, fuck it, let's do it. He's, he's one of the hardest working artists I ever worked with, ever. You know, he just has, he has just a few issues staying out of the system. Well, yeah, yeah, you know there's what I mean? that. You know, that kind of would hurt, like, we get this to this point and then go backwards. <laughs> hey, you've been staying out of trouble, Gucci, man. What's been, what's been different this time around? You know, just focusing on making money and managing, staying out of trouble. But the last thing that we heard from Gucci was that you allegedly threw a girl out of a car, uh, I guess down in Atlanta. What happened with that case? Hey, man, you think I'm going to talk about that? I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, mean, I got to ask just, everything. I'm just asking you. Yeah, I mean, we ask everything. We've seen it on news. Well, well I don't want to talk about that. Okay. That's, that's, that's an open case. You can't talk about an open case at this point. I thought yeah, it was settled. It's, it's settled. definitely not an open case, but it just ain't worth talking about. Mm -hmm. Gucci's run-ins with the law and eccentric life decisions, such as tattooing an ice cream cone on his face, is certainly a window into a world more colorful and exciting than most of us dare dream experiencing ourselves. But while the goofy shit may have made him a household name outside the hip-hop industry, it belies the fact that he is also a musical workhorse who spends marathon stretches in the studio when he's not in jail. Which, turns out, he is right now, until 2016. I liked when he was here because he stayed out of trouble, you know, and the label was like, hey, let's just keep him in the studio because when he in the studio, he ain't getting in trouble. Usually he'll go from jail to the studio. I call him like, I'm getting out. I done wrote a bunch of stuff. I got a lot of stuff I need to get off my chest. And then they'll come in the studio and he'll just work. I mean, that's how it's been every other time. In my office, I probably got like three hard drives worth of Gucci's music that ain't been released. The trouble that they get in or, or try to stay out of is almost the reason why their music come across so good, you probably never live that lifestyle, never see it, but you feel what they going through, feel what they doing, because these are the type of lifestyle, you know, you guys are living, so. I've always been working to get to the point I am now to continue to put out music. It was always my goal, and still is my goal, to get this point to, to do what I do now. Be a CEO of my own self, my own friends, my own family, and we make music and make millions of dollars. What I do it for. We respect Gucci so much, because Gucci will bring everybody together. He the mayor, like, he's the main guy when you talking about trap music, that's who you want to hear. Everybody else is, you know, under studies and, and doing their thing, but he just like the big dog. And he putting on everybody, he giving everybody a shot. While Atlanta is thoroughly scouted by the outside hip hop industry for both new artists and new styles to jack, within the perimeter, the only A&R anybody cares about impressing is Gucci Mane. 
Gucci is both the king of trap music and the king maker in the Atlanta hip hop scene. Of all the new artists who have come up in his absence, from established big name types like Migos and 2 Chainz to sudden up and comers like Rich Homie Kwan, Pee Wee Longway, and I Love McConan, almost everyone was either personally discovered and or tapped by Gucci, or have otherwise risen to fame under his imprimatur. Even locked away, his ice cream faced figure still looms large over the city, and Gucci's children are the ones running the show while they await the return of their once and future trap god. Everybody want that scrolla. 